All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Uh, I'm Andrew Bergmanson. I'm the senior, uh, senior and financial senior financial and loan specialist with SBA's Office of Capital Access. I'm going to be speaking about uh, SBA's resources and how they can help your small businesses. We're going to be uh, focusing specifically on capital access. I know that's with, uh, often on the top of everybody's mind, but we're also going to be going into a lot of SBA's uh, other resources. So uh, uh, I hope you're ready for a uh, a full uh, slate of what SBA has to offer. And I do want to emphasize that before we get started, SBA has resources for, for every phase of your business as you're going along. So from our microloan program, which goes as small as $500, um, to our, our 7A and 504 loan programs, which go up to $5 million, uh, and then a whole host of other opportunities for counseling, for federal contracting. Uh, we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of opportunities for your business, including some that you may not have thought of. So. Uh, with that, let's get started. I'm very excited to, to speak to you about these uh, these items. All right, so uh, just to give a little overview, we're gonna be starting with the SBA Office of Capital Access. Uh, that's mostly SBA's funding programs, but there's also an, a few other programs I wanna speak about, and in particular, our surety bond guarantee program. Uh, we're then gonna move on into training programs and expert advice. So I know a lot of people are familiar with the um, Veterans Business Outreach Center program. Uh, those exist all across the country, but we also have a lot of other uh, resources resources that are available uh, for people who are looking for looking for uh, the next step or looking for counseling in terms of small business help. Uh, and then I also do want to give a little uh, a little spotlight on our federal contracting opportunities. So what do we have available to help small businesses access contracts uh, from the federal government? Uh, and we'll be talking about that more in just a little bit. But to start, uh, we're going to focus on SBA's Office of Capital Access. Uh, so that's a 7A loan pro our 7A loan program, which is SBA's flagship loan program, 504 loans, micro loans, which as I said are loans under fifty thousand uh, dollars, our surety bond guarantee program, and our military reservist idle program. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Uh, so, what is available? The 7A loan program, we have $30 million available. That's a $5 million maximum loan. Maximum loan. We give loans for real estate, equipment, and working capital. And I also want to highlight a few specific programs we have. Those are the Export Express program, the, Exp the Export Working Capital program, or EWCP, and our international trade programs. And we're going to be getting into more details on those in just a little bit. Uh, I also want to talk about our 504 loan program. So there's $15 million in merit. $15 million available there, $11 million standard, and $4 million for refinancing. Uh, it's a $5 million maximum loan, but that does increase to $5.5 million for small manufacturing and energy public policy projects. Uh, and the 504 loan program is going to focus specifically on real estate and equipment, machinery and equipment, and also refinancing for those items. And like I said, we'll be getting into more detail on all these in just a little bit. Uh, and finally, I don't want to forget about microloans. Those are micro loan, those are loans, uh, fifty thousand dollars and under. It goes all the way down to five hundred dollars. So, uh, if you're not quite ready for one of those larger larger loans, the micro loan program is a great option. I want to highlight before we go any further our lender match tool. This is available online. You can see the the link there, or you can also just go to sba.gov and and search for lender match. It should come right up. Um, this is a free online tool that we offer. Uh, it connects uh, small businesses with participating SBA approved lenders, including micro lenders. Um, so what happens is you'll fill out a request. Within two business days, you'll receive an e email with the contact, contact of any lenders who are interested. Uh, and then you can continue that conversation with them and hopefully find a capital match. Um, but this is designed to be fully online and to be accessible to everybody and to go on to, uh, like, like it says here, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And to get started with that, you can just uh, go to our website or you can click on that link below once you get these slides. All right, so our 7A loan program is SPA's flagship loan program. It's our primary business loan program. It provides loan guarantees to lenders that allows them to provide financial help for small businesses with special requirements. Uh, and something I do want to emphasize here, um, in all of our programs, especially our loan programs, you're going to note that we're making loans to businesses that we believe in. We're not just handing things out, these things out because, uh, because we feel good or because this or because that. We want to make uh, sound business loans. That's what uh, enables us to make loans to everybody is by being prudent with the money that we're given. Um, but a lot of times banks need a little extra help or they need a little extra encouragement 
to actually go the extra mile and make loans to small businesses, to reach out to small businesses where they are. Uh, and that's where the SBA pro programs come in. Uh, the specifics of the, S of the 7A loan program is that conventional lenders are making those loans, and you may see on your, on your local bank, uh, SBA lender. Most of the time, that's because they do uh, 7A loans. Um, but SBA is going to provide a partial guarantee. So if for loans $150,000 or less, uh, we, we generally guarantee as much as 85%. Uh, and for loans over $150,000, it'll be a, closer to 75%. Uh, 7A loans can be used for a wide variety of, uh, of uh, different purposes, acquiring, refinancing, or improving real estate and buildings, short and long-term working capital. This is the primary working capital loan program. Uh, refinancing current business debt, purchasing and installation of machinery and equipment, including AI-related expenses. I know AI is on everybody's minds. It's also on SBA's mind, and this is something that we wanted to highlight, is that you can use that for that those purposes. Purchasing furniture, fixtures, and supplies, changes of ownership, both complete and partial. That's something that's uh, newly been uh, updated in the program to allow those changes of ownership. Uh, and it also includes multi-purpose loans. So any of those above in combination is also possible. Uh, and the maximum loan amount for 7A is $5 million. So I do also want to highlight these are uh, term loans, but they are also revolving lines of credit are available through 7A. And they may be fixed or variable. That will depend on your bank. Like I said, this is uh, where SBA provides a partial guarantee to, convert to conventional lenders, such as banks. So that will depend on your specific bank. but. Uh, just know that those details will vary depending on where you're where you're getting that loan from. Eligibility requirements. So, like I said, 7A loans are processed through standard uh, conventional lenders. That includes banks, credit unions, and more specialized lenders. The key eligibility factors for 7A loans are based on what the business does to receive its income, its credit history, and where the business operates. But to give a brief overview. Uh, seven, eight, for, to be eligible for 7A loan assistance, a business must be an operating business. They must operate for, pros, for profit. They must be located in the United States. Uh, be small under SBA size requirements. That is currently, um, we allow all use of an alternative size standard, which is less than $15 million in tangible net worth and less than $5 million in average net, average net income over the past three or five years, depending on what's more beneficial. Um, uh, and we also uh, we also allow for an industry specific size standard. So that would depend on your specific industry. But for example, um, a small advanced manufacturer may be different from a small uh, restaurant. So if you're uh, if you're a, a, a business such as advanced manufacturing, where maybe those specific numbers don't apply, uh, it is worth looking into also the industry specific size standard. And that's something your lender will be able to help you with. Um, not be a type of ineligible business. This one's a little vague. It's not meant to be kind of a gotcha category. Um, I'll give a kind of humorous example, which is that something we've seen is, you know, uh, a business that sells uh, art glass, which is uh, actually tends to actually was in this case a sp specifically uh, used to consume certain products which are uh, illegal at the federal level. So that would be an example of an ineligible business. Um, like I said, it's not meant to be a, a gotcha category, but if, if you're involved in that kind of business, which, like I said, is illegal at the federal level, that would not be eligible for the 7A program. Um, not be able to obtain the desired credit on reasonable terms from non-federal, non-state, and non-local government sources. So the, where SBA is coming in is we're saying in these instances where, um, you know, the bank maybe has some hesitation, maybe it's smaller than the amount they normally do, maybe it's a different term than the amount they normally do. Uh, they feel that it's a good opportunity, but it's just it doesn't maybe fit their normal credit box. That's where we're coming in. So um, your bank will help you with this. But if, if your bank says, you know, hey, we're not willing really to do this on our as, as a conventional loan unless we have the backing of an SBA guarantee, that's where we're able to come in. And finally, be credit worthy and demonstrate a reasonable ability to pay the loan. So. Loans are made on cash flow. We will be doing an analysis of your business. We want to make sure that this is a credit worthy business, that it's worth investing in, that it's worth uh, worth providing this credit opportunity. So this this is not just an, a, a handout. This is for businesses that that really want to make it work that for people who put their put their uh, their selves and their businesses on the line. We're, we're designed to help those types of businesses. So please keep that in mind that you need to be a credit worthy business in order to, to qualify. All right, international trade loans. So 
Uh, international trade loans help small businesses, small businesses expand globally and increase revenues. Um, the 7A loan program offers three types of programs that specifically promote international expansion for U.S. small businesses. And these days, you know, everybody wants to be, uh, you know, not just thinking locally, not just thinking even nationally, but thinking globally, thinking about every opportunity there is to grow their business. So these are great opportunities if that's something that you're looking for. Uh, we offer Export Express loans. Uh, it, this expedites the SBA guarantee on term loans and lines of credit up to $500,000 for exporters. We also have the Export Working Capital Program. These are designed for small businesses to generate export sales that need additional working capital. And we can offer up to $5 million and a, $5 million and a guarantee of up to 90% through that program. Uh, and finally, we offer international trade loans. So that's a combination of term and working capital loans for businesses that plan to start or continue exporting. And again, we can offer up to $5 million and a guarantee of 90% for those international trade loans. So if you are looking to expand internationally, those are great resources to keep in mind. Uh, I also want to highlight this, uh, the Veterans Advantage. This is a specific opportunity that we offer on our loans $500,000 or less, specifically SBA Express loans. Uh, we offer fee relief to veteran-owned small businesses. So it's a standard 7A loan structure and terms. Um, you have to be at least 51% owned by veterans or military spouses. But in those instances, for those X SBA Express loans under $500,000, SBA will not collect a guarantee a guarantee fee on loan which meet those above criteria I just talked about. So that's a great opportunity, especially for our veteran owned, business, owned small businesses or military spouse owned small businesses. Uh, keep that in mind that there is an advantage for those specific types of loans. All right, we're going to shift gears a little bit. Um, this is SBA's uh, 504 loan program. And the difference between these two loan programs, uh, part of it is technical. The 504 loan program uh, operates with a conventional loan and also a, uh, a loan, which is the 504 loan, which is 100% uh, government guaranteed. Um, but also it's in terms of purpose. The 504 loan is really de de designed for real estate, uh, building improvements, uh, and also machinery and equipment. So we'll go through this here. Um, we provide funding for fixed assets. So that's, like I said, real estate acquisition building improvements, and ground-up construction. Uh, and I do want to highlight, if you are using a 504 loan for ground construction, you will not begin paying off on, the, on that loan. That loan will not close until that entire structure has been constructed and you are ready to occupy it and begin working on, uh, you know, operating your business out of that building. So keep that in mind. Uh, we also uh, offer, uh, we also can uh, loop in machinery and equipment on 504 loans. We can do machinery and equipment loans. We can make that a part of the real estate loan. So if you need machinery and equipment and as part of your business, that can also be part of the 504 loan program. Uh, and then finally, uh, refinancing of equipment term, lo term loans and deeds of trust or mortgages. So if you have a, a loan and that's based on assets that would have been 504 eligible, so those things that we just talked about, real estate, building improvement, machinery and equipment, et cetera, you can also refinance that through the 504 loan program. We offer uh, refinancing without expansion, which allows uh, businesses to also uh, uh, loop in a limited amount of eligible business expenses. And we also offer refinancing with expansion, which allows uh, businesses to refinance the loans they already have on better terms and also uh, include a piece to expand their business uh, along specific lines. Um, the way these work is, uh, we'll, we'll get into the details in just a little bit, but certified development companies are local nonprofits located across the country. Uh, they partner with f private lenders to put these structures together. And typically this is a 50, 40, 10 structure. So 10% money down, 10% uh, borrower's injection rather. 40% uh, is the CDC loan, which is 100% guaranteed by SBA. And then 50% of the project is a more conventional loan. Um, the program requirements, you must be an eligible business, you must be small, which is those same, uh, those same numbers I talked about. Generally, it's going to be uh, less than 15 million uh, in tangible net worth and less than 5 million in average net income for the last three or five years. Uh, and you must also meet economic development goals or public policy, to go public policy goals. One of those public policy goals, which we'll be getting into, is uh, expansion of uh, businesses owned by veterans, especially service disabled veterans. So. You may already meet those goals even without trying, but uh, let's get into a few more of the details here. All right, 
This is a, a little bit of an overwhelming slide. We're just going to highlight a few of the, the main things to note here. So like I said, there's going to be a 504 loan for this project, this type of project structure. There's going to be a third party loan, which is a conventional loan. Um, that'll, that'll typically be 50% of the project structure. There's a 504 loan, which is going to be 100% uh, guaranteed by SBA. Um, that has a fixed interest rate and it has a below market interest rate. So that's extremely attractive to small businesses. Uh, the borrower is able to contribute just 10%, uh, which is uh, below what a, a conventional loan would generally allow. Generally, conventional lenders are uh, going to be asking for more of a 15 or 15% or more uh, borrower contribution. Um, there are a couple instances that I do want to note. Uh, for new businesses or for special purpose properties, you will have to contribute 15%. And if it's both new and special purpose, the borrower's uh, contribution goes up to 20%. And that's just based on the the, the statistics that, that we've uh, that we've run in order to keep the the program solvent. But for most cases, for most borrowers, it's a borrower equity injection of just 10%. Um, and if there's additional borrower contribution, that's going to reduce the 504 loan. The 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 third party loan is generally going to be 50%. Um, a few uh, more details here. So the minimum project for SBA for a 504 loan is $125,000. Uh, the minimum 504 loan, so the minimum 504 piece of that would be $50,000. Um, and the maximum project size we can do is $20 million. Um, for loan amounts specifically for the 504 loan, for most loans, that's a maximum of $5 million, but it's going to, be, uh, it's going to bump up to 5.5 million for uh, small manufacturers, energy efficient projects and green energy projects. Um, there's a maximum total eligibility of $16.5 million, so keep that in mind. And then in order to be eligible for a 504 loan, you have to either create, you, you generally have to create or retain one job within two years of project completion for every $90,000 guaranteed by the SBA. Um, there's a special carve out for small manufacturers and energy public policy projects that bumps up to 120,000, um, but, Aside from that, you can also meet a specific community development, public policy, or energy reduction goal, including expansion of small businesses owned and controlled by veterans, especially service-disabled veterans. So if you're a small business that's owned and controlled by veterans, you already meet one of those public policy goals for the 504 loan program. So that's, that's one hurdle you've already crossed. Uh, benefits to the borrower. Low down payment, which preserves working capital, as I said, that's usually 10%. Uh, below market fixed interest rates, which are extremely attractive. We also offer longer terms than conventional loans. For, so uh, real estate loans for, uh, for SBA 504 loans can go as long as 25 year terms. That's generally much longer than what banks will, uh, will provide in, uh, in general. So that's also extremely attractive to borrowers. Uh, the borrower can finance closing fees and soft costs that gets wrapped into the final 504 project. Um, it reduces the risk of private financing, which results in lower ranks, rates from the bank. Uh, and collateral is usually limited to the subject real estate with the third party lender in the first lien and SBA in the second lien position. All right, shifting gears again, I want to talk about our microloan program. And this is a great place to start for businesses that are just starting out. Uh, the microloan program works through mission-based lenders and nonprofits. Uh, microloans can range to as, from as small as $500 to up to $50,000. Interest rates are negotiated by the lender, but they generally range between 8% and 13%. Um, these are used for working capital, uh, purchase of furniture and fixtures, uh, supplies, material, and equipment. Uh, the only thing you can't really use these for is real estate, but other than that, there's a wide variety in your, your flexibility in terms of what you want to use these loans for. And then uh, repayment terms vary based on loan amount, plan use, lender requirements, and the needs of the small business owner, but the maximum al allowed repayment term is six years, so keep that in mind. But if you're looking for, a, you know, if you're not ready for a, a serious loan, so for, for example, we spoke about 504, that's mostly for, uh, a lot of that is for, uh, buying real estate or ground construction or, or machinery and equipment, that kind of stuff. If you're, not, if you're not at that level yet with your business, if you're just kind of starting out, the microloan program may be a great program. And a lot of micro lenders also offer technical assistance. They can connect you with, uh, as, we're, as we're gonna speak about in a little bit, uh, some of the resources that we offer in terms of counseling, 
uh, they're designed to kind of help you through that process. So if you're just starting out on your business, this is a great opportunity. All right. Surety bond guarantees. This falls under that category of things that you might not have thought of that SBA can help you with. Um, surety bonds uh, help small businesses win contracts by providing the customer with a, a guarantee that the work will be com completed. And uh, the reason you might need a surety bond is a lot of pr public and private contracts require surety bonds. They're offered by specific surety companies. Um, what SBA does is we guarantee surety bonds for certain surety companies and that allows companies to offer surety bonds to small businesses that might not otherwise meet the criteria. Um, and specifically, it, it, it might allow us to, to make surety bonds where, it might allow the companies to make surety bonds where they wouldn't otherwise be able to, but it also may allow them to increase the amount of the surety bond that they're willing to give because of that guarantee. So it may allow those small businesses to punch above their weight, whereas before they were held down at a certain level, it allows small businesses to, to qualify for larger contracts based on this, on this uh, guarantee program. Um, so there's a few different types of, uh, of uh, different bonds that we can guarantee, bid bonds, payment bonds, performance, bond, performance bonds, uh, and also ancillary bonds, which ensure uh, completion of requirements outside of these, these other uh, requirements. Um, if, if you need one of these bonds, likely you probably already, already are aware of this. I do want to just highlight, though, that we only guarantee contract bonds, not commercial bonds. So keep that distinction in mind. Um, there's a few criteria that you have to meet. You have to qualify as small under SBI size standards. We already talked about that. Um, you have to have a small contract. So that can go up to $6.5 million for non-federal contracts. If you're in the federal space, that can go up to $10 million. So keep that in mind. This might be a great opportunity if you want to do contracting with the federal government. Uh, and pass evaluation. So you have to meet the surety company's credit, capacity, and character requirements. So they will do some analysis to make sure that you're worthy of giving, giving this loan to, of this uh, surety bond to. Uh, but like I said, this allows small, business, small businesses to punch above their weight, to qualify for uh, surety bonds that are larger than what they might not want to qualify for or to qualify if there maybe there was some other snag, as long as you can meet the credit capacity and character requirements, you can qualify for this program. Uh, I do want to notice there's a, P, a fee of 0.6% uh, of the contract price for performance and payment bonds, but not for bid bonds. Uh, and you can find on our website a directory of all the surety bond agencies that offer SBA guaranteed bonds. Uh, you can click here if you have the slides or just go to sba.gov and search for that and you, that should come right up. Military reservist law. This is another thing I want to include because I know that a lot of uh, veterans are also using other employees who are in the space, want to be, you know, giving, giving jobs and giving employment opportunities to people who are reservists or who, who are in the military. If you have an essential employee who is a military reservist and they're called to active duty, SBA provides loans to help eligible small businesses with operating expenses. So you can use the proceeds of this loans for ordinary and necessary operating expenses. Um, you just can't use it for lost income or lost profits or in lieu of regular commercial debt you would, uh, or to refinance. Those are, as I said, we have other programs for that. That's not what this is for. Um, uh, the terms you can see here, I won't get into the full details of this, but maturity can be up to 30 years and there's no prepayment penalty or fees. Um, so, I do want to highlight here, uh, the filing pe period for this, it begins on the date that the essential employee receives a notice of expected call-up, and it ends, for one, it ends one year after that essential employee is discharged or released from active duty. So if you've had someone who's recently been called up, or even if you've had someone who was, you know, out of the business for a while and who's just been able to come back, you may still qualify for this loan. Um, the maximum amount is $2 million. Uh, the amount is limited to the is limited to the actual economic in injury as calculated by SBA. Um, and it, it will also depend on your business interruption insurance or any other factors like that. If your business is a major source of employment, if you're in your area, SBA has the authority to waive that $2 million statu statutory limit. Um, and businesses with the financial capacity to fund their own recovery are not eligible for MRI assistance. So this is really for businesses that otherwise would not be able to fund or otherwise would be in a, in a uh, place of hardship because they're losing an essential employee. That's what this is designed for. Um, and then collateral requirements, you can see here, it's required for loans over $50,000. 
Um, and uh, you can see the SBA will not decline a loan for lack of collateral, but will require the bar borrower to pledge collateral that is available. All right, so we're gonna shift gears entirely. Now I know this is the, the Veterans Symposium for, ac for Access to Capital, but um, a lot of times veterans, you know, and small business owners in general, we often focus specifically on, you know, we, we have a one-track mind, we want, we want funding, we need funding, we're desperate for funding, I totally get that, that's an important part of what we do. Um, but I also want to highlight some of the other services that we offer. Um, counseling is extremely important and this can help businesses to qualify for funding, especially if you're, if you're using SBA resources. SBA funders or SBA people who are giving SBA loans, they may want you to go to one of these resources and, and get help and get assistance before you're able before you uh, qualify for one of their loans. We have resources and we have resources specifically available for veterans that I want to highlight here. So starting with our Veterans Business Outreach Center program, and I know that a lot of people are already familiar with this. Uh, this is designed to provide entrepreneurial development services such as business trading, counseling, and resource partner referrals to service members, veterans, National, National Guard and Reserve members, military spouses, and family members who are interested in starting or growing a business. And VBOX offer a wide variety of different services, transitions as Transition assistance programs, including Boots to Business and Boots to Business Reboot. We'll be talking about, the, about those specific programs in just a second. We offer pre-business plan workshops, including the ability to offer work directly with the business counselor. Uh, concept assessments, so just giving a, a basic assessment of does my is my business viable, feasible, does this make sense? Uh, just kind of basic feedback on that. Business plan preparation. So going through all the different elements, such as the legal form of the business, equipment, requirement and cost, organizational structures, strategic plan, market analysis, financial plan, all that stuff. Uh, the business plan in particular is very important when you're looking for loans, either if you want to go for an SBA loan or especially if you want to go for a commercial loan. One of the first things I'll ask for is a business plan, so this is very important to keep in mind. Uh, comprehensive feasibility analysis, uh, looking at strengths and wet weaknesses to inform your strategic plan, entrepreneurial training and counseling, mentorship, and other business uh, development related services, including internet marketing, accounting, franchising, international trade, all sorts of other things that SBA can help you do, our veterans business outreach centers are designed to help you with. And I have a little map here that kind of shows the wide uh, range of uh, veterans business outreach centers. They're located all across the country. So there probably is one by you uh, for a list of all the uh, out, uh, the VBOC, we call these VBOCs, um, for a list of all of our VBOC uh, center locations. Uh, you can go on our website or click on that link below. And there's also a tool there. If you put in your, your zip code, it will automatically find the closest VBOC to you. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, boots to business training series. So this is something, like I said, that our VBOX are, are uh, heavily involved in uh, creating and promoting. Uh, this is a training series that's designed to take uh, entrepreneurs from kind of that initial idea to getting to uh, providing the foundational knowledge required to develop a business plan. So you get introduced to a broad spectrum of entrepreneurial business concepts and resources available to access. Uh, to access startup capital, technical assistance, contracting opportunities, and more. Uh, the distinction between Boots to Business and Boots to Business Re Reboot, Boots to Business is offered on military installations. Boots to Business Reboot is really more designed for veterans and uh, people who are already out in the community. So those are offered at VBOX across the country, and there's also online offerings uh, included in that. So I know that most of, uh, most of the veterans here are probably more interested in that Boots to Business Rebo Reboot, but I also know that uh, veterans have, uh, have friends, they have colleagues, they have uh, community members who they know who are, who are still in the service. So I did want to kind of provide uh, both sides of that because we do this also on military installations. That's also something that's available there. Um, and then Boots to Business Revenue Readiness. That's kind of the second step. If you've done one of those courses and you're ready to kind of take it from, from this kind of business plan into a more executable business model, we also offer that. And those are all online courses. It's a six week course. Um, you can find information about all these on our on our website, which is sba.gov, but these are all excellent resources that, like I said, are specifically designed and tailored for veterans uh, to help them access, uh, access uh, startup capital, technical assistance, all that good stuff. 
Um, we also offer additional training options for veterans. So there's a women's veterans entrepreneurship training program, a service disabled veteran entrepreneurship training program, a military spa spouse pathway to business program, um, which is mostly online, but uh, you, you can find information about all of these. There's a few select organizations that offer these, these specific training programs, but they are great resources, especially if you fall into one of those specific categories. So I do wanna make people aware of that. Uh, and then finally, something that I think is very important to talk about is the Veteran Financial Procur Federal Procurement Entrepreneurship Training Program. Um, this is for people who are uh, interested in uh, becoming uh, part of the federal procurement process. Um, there's a carve out, which is now up to 5% for uh, service disabled veteran owned small businesses in the federal government. Um, and also uh, there's uh, programs within the VA for, uh, for any veteran owned small business. Um, you can visit the Veteran Institute for Procurement at the, the website is right here. They have a wide variety of resources and a lot of tr uh, a training program that's specifically designed for small businesses, uh, veteran owned small businesses that want to be involved in the federal procurement process. Uh, so you can also, you can go through our website, sba.gov, or you can go right here to this website listed here for more information on that. Uh, and that's a, that's a space that, uh, you know, veterans are extremely uh, successful in, can be extremely uh, productive in, but it's also a space that has specific challenges and specific considerations that really need to be thought about. So something important to keep in mind is we, we have resources available if you are trying to get involved in federal procurement, that is something that's available. All right, we're gonna shift gears for our final time and talk about some of the general SBA resources. Um, we've already talked about a lot of resources that are veteran specific, and it's great that we're able to offer that. But I also want to highlight that just because we have resources that are specific for veterans, that doesn't mean that veterans can't take, can't make use of any of the programs that SBA has to offer. So um, we're going to talk about some of our general counseling opportunities, some of our uh, our small business investment company funding, SBIC funding, uh, and export support, uh, in addition to what we've already talked about. So first, uh, count general counseling. Uh, SBA has a number of different programs. We have the SCORE program. Um, this is where uh, kind of seasoned entrepreneurs are able to provide one-on-one -on -one, uh, counseling and one-on-one -on -one, uh, communication with small businesses who are kind of looking for people who've been there and done that already and, and want to learn from those individuals. Uh, the SCORE program can be great for kind of providing that, that specific type of advice. Uh, the SBDC program, Small Business Development Centers, these are located all across the country. Um, they're designed to help small businesses access capital uh, and to provide counseling. Um, those are located, like I said, all across the country. We also have women's business centers that are located across the country. Um, you can find out about those at sba.gov. They'll have a, a directory of all of those, and there's almost certain to be one uh, very close to wherever you may be located. Uh, as I, I, I certainly don't want to forget our VBOC program. I know we talked about that already, but Veterans Business Outreach Centers are specifically designed for veterans to, to help uh, with counseling and, and access to capital. Uh, these, these, uh, these different resources can do all sorts of things. They can help you with your business plan, with expense sheets, financial statements, financial proje projections. Uh, and I also want to highlight local SBA district offices. So SBA has a district office at least one in every state. Um, and those can really help you specifically if you know that you want to access SBA resources or if you're kind of looking, you know, you, you need some help to get started and ask, accessing a specific SBA resource, your district office can help you with that as well. So lots of resources who are all designed, all, all, all uh, focused on helping you access capital, helping you get the counseling you need to succeed. They're there for you and we hope that you take advantage of them if that's what you need. Our small business investment company program. So I know that a lot of people have uh, are very interested in the, the VC space, venture capital space. Small business inve investment companies are privately owned companies that are licensed and regulated by the SBA. They invest in small businesses in the form of debt and equity. The SBA doesn't invest directly in the small business. We provide funding to the qualified SBIC. Uh, they specialize in a certain sector or industry and then they, they decide what's uh, best for the small businesses in their portfolio. Um, but those SBICs use their private funds along with SBA-backed funding to invest in small businesses. So if you have strong financial performance and promising prospects, you can work with SBA, SBICs to grow and expand through connections and expertise in your industry, 
and through business investment. So that may be uh, debt, equity, or a combination of, of both. Uh, and you can find out more about that at the link uh, below or just go to sba.gov and look for SBACs. Uh, you'll find out all about that. Uh, there's also something else I want to highlight on this slide, which is not in this presentation, but it's an, important not to forget about. Uh, SBA also has the SBIR and STTR program. Those are designed specifically for research, so people who are doing advanced research or kind of advanced technology grants. Uh, there's a, a, throughout the federal government, there are agencies, including DOD, that are looking for advanced research and how to how to uh, how to use that research to to improve what the government is doing or how how the governments can support the development of advanced research. Um, if you're in that advanced research space, that's also something look, worth looking into. So, like I said, SBIR and STTR. The STTR is specifically for uh, partnering with academia, uh, but those are both great great programs to keep in mind as well. Uh, international trade and exporting. So, 96% of consumers live outside of the U.S. Two thirds of the world's purchasing power is in foreign countries. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity there. I know that small businesses are always looking for opportunities to expand and uh, international trade and export can be a great opportunity to do that. SBA has a number of different ways to help you with this. There are uh, US export assistance centers and small business development centers in addition to all those other counseling uh, aid, uh, programs that I discussed that can help counsel and train uh, small businesses in order to help them uh, access access those uh, those foreign markets. Uh, we have the state trade expansion program. This is a grant program that allows small businesses to find buyers internationally. Um, that can that can uh, range from a number of different things from helping to kind of internationalize your website. And it's important to know that these days a lot of companies are exporters without even thinking about it because they're already selling on their website and they're selling across the country as it is. So making that more viable, uh, allowing them to do that, it can also help you to identify buyers in other, in other countries. That can be done through the state trade expansion program. And then finally, export funding. So we talked about these already, I'll just highlight them again. Export express loans, export working capital loans, and international trade loans, a whole suite of programs which are all designed to help exporters get funding that they need in order, in order to increase their exports and grow their, grow their, uh, grow their business abroad. So wherever you are in the process, whatever you're thinking about in terms, of, in terms of expanding internationally, SBA can help you through that process. And finally, I don't want to leave without uh, mentioning some of our veteran contract assistance programs. Um, so we have the VET CERT program, which I'm sure many uh, individuals are, are familiar with. We're going to be focusing on any veteran-owned small, business, small businesses in this slide, and then on our next slide, we're going to be focusing specifically on the service disabled veteran owned small businesses. If you're a veteran owned small business, there are uh, certain contracts at the veteran at the Department of Veterans Affairs at VA uh, under the VA's Vets First program that you may qualify for. And in order to, to qualify for that, you must uh, you have to, you have to certify through the Vet Cert program. Uh, you'll have to be considered a small business as designed by the size standard corresponding to the NAICS code listed in the business's SAM profile. And you have to have no less than 51% of the business owned and controlled by one or more veterans. Um, and to establish an SBA account and apply for certification, uh, you can visit the Veteran Small Business Certification Portal, uh, or you can just go to sba.gov and uh, search for that. You should be able to find that without any issue. But I do want to give a shout out to our sponsor, the NVBDC, because they were extremely uh, NVSBC, uh, because they were extremely helpful in uh, in helping SBA put this program together. So a big thanks to them. All right, services on service disabled veteran owned small business program, and this slide is out of date now. I've learned because the federal government now aims to award at least five percent, not three percent, of all federal contracting dollars to service disabled veteran owned small businesses (SD VOSBs) each year. Um, competition is limited for certain federal contract opportunities to businesses that participate in the SD VOSB program, and these are located throughout the federal government. Uh, joining the SD VOSB program makes your business eligible to compete for the program set aside and sole source contracts across the federal government, like I mentioned. Um, to apply for certification, you meet, need to meet the following requirements. Uh, be considered a small business as, this, as it defined by the size standard corresponding to your NAICS code, so that's a code that's based on the industry that you operate in. 
um, have no less than 51% of the business owned and controlled by one or more veterans rated, rated as service disabled by the VA. And for those veterans who are permanently and totally disabled and unable to manage the daily business operations of their business, their business may still qualify if their spouse or appointed permanent caregiver is assisting in that management. And again, uh, to go through that certification process, you can click on that link or go to sba.gov and you should be able to find more information about it there. Surplus personal property for veteran-owned small businesses. So uh, early in my career in, uh, uh, in uh, working in entrepreneurship, I used, to, I used to do a lot of work for, for small businesses that were just starting out and trying to plan things. And without a doubt, every single small business said they needed funding, and it's true. Every small business does need funding. A lot of small businesses are hurting for capital, and we certainly understand that. But a lot of times, businesses need funding not just because they need capital in the bank, but because they need it for X or they need it for Y, they need it for Z, they need it for specific things that they need to purchase in, their, in the operations of their business. So if you can think beyond just, you know, what do I need in terms of specific cash to what are the actual specific resources that I need, that can open you up to a lot of help that you might not have realized. And one opportunity is the Surplus Personal Property for Better Known Small Businesses program. Veteran-owned small businesses can access federally-owned personal property that's no longer in use uh, through the General Services Administration's uh, property donation program. And like I said, this may be an, a way to, to get additional resources for your business that you wouldn't have been able to get if you, you know, maybe um, that without having to apply for a loan, if you just need specific property, maybe you don't need to go through the process of getting a loan, maybe there's another way to do that, and this is one of those ways. So this is uh, kind of shared between the GSA, like I said, the General Services Administration, and also state agencies for surplus property, those are called SASPs. Um, so GSA kind of oversees the general reuse uh, and donation of federal personal property, uh, they have this website, gsaaccess.gov, which uh, you, can, you can look through there to, to see kind of what's available. They allocate property to the states for donation, and they review those SASP operations. But the SASP is really what's going to manage the disbursement. So verification of eligibility, program compliance, fee collection, record keeping, all that kind of specific stuff. Um, so what do you need to do to, equal, to qualify for this? Uh, VOSBs may get federal surplus property from the, the SASP in the state where they live, uh, in the state where the property will be primarily located and used, excuse me. Uh, when you get that property, you have to agree in writing that your VOSB is located and operated within the state, that it's unconditionally owned and controlled by one or more eligible veterans, service disabled veterans, or surviving spouses, that it has registered and is in certified status with SBA's VET CERT program database. So we already discussed how to get qualified through VET CERT earlier in the presentation. We'll use the property in the normal conduct of its business activities. So you can't use this for personal or non-business use. We'll not sell, transfer, loan, lease, or encumber, or otherwise dispose of the property during the period of restriction, unless it has received express written author authorization from these three, from SBA, GSA, and, SS, the, and the state agency. We'll get permission from donating as, uh, the, any proper. We'll get permission from the donating SASP before permanently removing the property from the state. We'll use the property as intended within one year of receipt. We'll maintain its VOSB eligibility with SBA and the state agency for the duration of the applicable period. And we'll give SBA, GSA, and or the SASP access to inspect the property and all personal per pertinent records if that's requested. So you can go to the state agency in the state where your VOSB is headquartered for more details on the program requirements. And you can also click on that link for more information about the general program. All right, so I know I threw a lot of information at you. I'm gonna kind of wrap this up with just a few of the resources that you can take away. The first one is perhaps the most important, that's sba.gov. You can find out about all of SBA's programs on our website. Uh, most of this information is uh, completely available. All the details are all available on the website. So if you, if you weren't frantically taking notes on every single detail of these programs that I was mentioning, just go on the website. They'll have more details available for you to discuss. Uh, find your district office. So you can input your, dis, uh, your zip code to find your local district office. They can help be your portal to new SBA kind of resources. Lender Match, which I mentioned at the beginning of the program, 
uh, that's a great way to get started to, to kind of begin the initial process with uh, with uh, your uh, with with uh, participating lenders through SBA. Uh, reporting fraud, which is always important. If you know of any fraud that affects SBA, please let us know. We have uh, resources for that here. Uh, NADCO's 50 states, most recent files for 2022. Uh, this is just kind of a uh, an overview of a few 504 small business success stories. So like I said, those are real estate specific, but that just gives you an idea of the, the different types of real estate machinery and equipment uh, loans that SBA is funding all across the US. And we do this in, you know, in all 50 states. Um, so that can just kind of give you an idea of the different kind of pro, uh, projects that we work on. And, and finally, I put a link here to SBA programs for veterans specifically. So this is a portal where you can see all the programs that SBA offers to veterans and their families. Uh, and that's a great resource uh, for more information. All right, and with that, I'll, I guess I'll see if we have any questions. Um, doesn't look like we have any questions. Um, well, I guess I'll just, I'll just close by saying, like I said, that all of this information is available on the SBA.gov website. So if you're if you have any questions about anything that I have discussed today, that is the first place to go. Um, it's uh, we've done a lot of work to make that a lot more searchable, even though it's a government website. We've uh, put in the we've uh, recruited some people from the private sector to make it uh, flashy and nice and uh, good looking. So um, you can go there and find out information about all of those programs that I mentioned today and more. So there's a kind of a, a thorough listing of our programs, of the requirements for those programs, of the resources, of where those things are available. Uh, like I said, you can also locate your, your closest uh, Veterans Business Outreach Center. Uh, you'll be able to also locate, it, uh, locate your, your closest district office, uh, small business development centers, uh, lenders. Like I said, through the Lender Match tool, you can get matched with lenders in your area who are willing to make loans based on your business's specific criteria. So, that's kind of the, the one resources that I would recommend is go to sba.gov um, and they'll be able to, to answer any of your questions on any of the programs that I discussed today. Um, and with that, I think we're gonna end the presentation because we're just about at our time, I believe. I do believe so. I don't see any questions um, coming in either. So I haven't seen any questions yet. So All right. Yeah. Well, I'll just assume that that meant uh, that I did a really good job and that everything was perfectly explained. But if it's not, and if you have any questions, like I said, go to the website or go to your local district office, to your Veterans Business Outreach Center, to, to any local SBDC or other resources like that. They'll also, they're designed to be able to help you through this process. So keep them in mind. We're, we're here to work with you, not against you. So we, we offer those resources. We offer those resources online. Make sure you take advantage of them and, uh, Best of luck to all of you in your in your small business ventures and thank you very much.